U.S. v. Michigan was a, a, a kind of a huge source of pride to the tribes. And at the time, in the, in the early 70s, most of these tribes had very little of anything. Bay Mills had a reservation uh, going back a, a long ways. The Sioux tribe uh, really didn't have much of any kind of a reservation. The Grand Traverse came along later in the litigation. But the success of U.S. v. Michigan, which, was, which really was a kind of a pole star that, that, that attracted a lot of attention, uh, created uh, a great deal of infrastructure uh, for the tribes. And one of the stories I always tell, and I've told it before, uh, so probably the people on the panel will have heard it, but I'll tell you, I, I, when I first met, uh, my client was the Bay Mills Union community, but I also uh, was lead counsel for uh, the Sioux tribe, uh, essentially. And when I met uh, for the first time with the Sioux tribe in 1975, in March, uh, we were in a little uh, double-wide garage. Uh, that was the only property that the Sioux tribe had. It had a garage. It was a concrete floor. There was a, a light bulb at the end of a, of a cord hanging down. There was a folding uh, table against the wall and a couple of folding chairs. And we sat down with the tribal chairman, uh, who I believe was the only employee of the tribe at the time. We sat down with Captain Tierney and Jim Janetta. There may have been one or two other people there, I'm not sure, but it was just a handful of us. We, we unfolded the table and set it up in the middle of this garage. We were sitting with our down jackets on because it was March and we were freezing to death, and there was no heat in the facility. And that was the sum total of the Sioux Tribe's uh, infrastructure and employees. They had a two-car garage and, and one employee, the tribal chairman. Uh, now, today, of course, they have a vast amount of land, a significant amount of land, I wouldn't say vast, a significant amount of land and trust. They have a number of uh, economic enterprises. They have uh, all of the facilities that you come to know and expect to, to have. But at the time, a mere 35 years ago, none of that was there. And I, I, I truly believe that the United States versus Michigan, which focused everyone's attention on the tribes, and gave the tribe a great sense, all the tribes, a great sense of accomplishment that they could do something that their rights were going to be recognized now by the federal courts, uh, spawned many, many other uh, activities on the reservation, more grants, uh, health clinics, schools, uh, all sorts of things. So uh, the case was very important in that respect. There are still uh, battles to be fought, and I think that everyone can appreciate that that's been involved in, in treaty rights. But the battles are different now. In the 70s and 80s and, and through Mill Act's litigation, we were fighting to establish the existence of the right. And we were, we were very fortunate to be able to do that. A lot of hard work, a lot of people involved, but we were very fortunate to do that. Now, we don't have to worry about that so much, but what we do have to worry about uh, is the resource. And I think that's where Glyphwood, of course, comes in. First and foremost, you know, the resource has to be protected. And that's the way you fend off your adversaries. That's the way you beat back your critics who say that the tribes can't do these things, or they can't do them effectively, or they spread whatever propaganda they, they can about the nature of the exercise of the right. And so first and foremost, whatever is said, whatever uh, negative things are said about the tribes with respect to the, to the treaty resource, if you look at the resource and see that the resource is, is protected, uh, that's the best insurance policy to keeping those rights uh, really in perpetuity in the future. I just want to say uh, that uh, congratulations. Uh, congratulations to Glyphwick, to its longevity, Hopefully, uh, the next time we're together, we'll be celebrating the next uh, 25th anniversary uh, for those of us that are still around. And we have so much to be proud of, uh, tribal leaders, tribal biologists, conservation officers. This has always been a great team effort, and, uh, and I applaud you and congratulate you. Thank you.